When I was a young girl, I read that Jean Genet always wanted to go to Saint Laurent prison. He wanted to go to French Guiana with the other hardcore prisoners. He wanted to go to Devil's Island. He wanted to be interred in Saint Laurent. He wanted to be where Dreyfus was and where many prisoners died of malaria or trying to escape in the Moroni River that was filled with piranhas. But he wanted to go there because that's where the real prisoners went. But they closed it down in the 40s just when he had his sentence and he never got to go to Saint Laurent prison. And I read that he mourned that fact. So I decided that I would go there someday and I would bring him back a present from Saint Laurent prison. I would bring him back some earth or some stones, something, any small souvenir that spoke of the prison. So I never met Jean Genet. I didn't know him, but I knew William Burroughs very well, and I knew Allen Ginsberg. And William said that he would introduce me to Genet sometime. And I thought, I'm going to go get something at Saint Laurent prison for Jean Genet and meet him. And even if he doesn't like me or doesn't like girls, he will like the stones. So in 1981, I had my first wedding anniversary. And my husband said to me that I could go anywhere in the world if I would give him a son. And I promised him I would give him a son, and I said, I want to go to Saint Laurent prison. So Fred and I went to French Guiana in February of 1981. And Fred and I spent two days exploring. And one day I went alone into the mass cell, and there were still chains on the walls where the prisoners had been chained. And I dug deep in the earth, and I picked four, three or four stones, I think three, and they were all different. One was big and glittery, one was red, almost like chalk, and one was a simple brown stone. And I put them in a oversized jetan matchbox. After that, I had a son, as I promised. But I didn't get to meet Jean Genet because he died in 1984. And he died the day that the Americans bombed Libya. And we killed Gaddafi's adopted daughter, Hannah Gaddafi. And Hannah was an orphan, an adopted orphan, like Genet was. There was something very poignant and beautiful about Genet dying at the same time as Hannah Gaddafi, and I like to imagine those two going to heaven together. In any event, I had these stones. I had these stones now in this box, in this envelope, and I still was determined that I would give them to Jean Genet. And finally, I had a little concert in Tangier. And it was a little concert honoring all of these people, William and Janae and Paul Bowles and, and Allen Ginsberg and Brian Geisen. All of their spirits were surrounding this conference. And I saw my two friends, the German friend and the Moroccan friend, and they took me to La Roche. And when we arrived, an old woman opened the gate to the cemetery. I think it was a Spanish cemetery, a Christian cemetery, 
But Shanae is buried in a, a more eastern way, I believe facing east. And following the old woman was a little boy, about four years old. And the little boy came and sat with us and sat on the grave and plucked the flowers on the grave while we went to bury the stones. And so I was able to do what I had promised I would do as a young girl. I opened up the box and I took out the envelope and I opened the envelope and took out the stones and I poured some water on the grave and I dug a deep, deep hole and I put the stones with the earth, bits of earth of Saint Laurent prison clinging to them deep in the grave of Genet. And after that, the little boy sat there plucking the rest of the flowers that we had left. And I thought that Janae had two reasons to be happy. He had some earth and stones of his beloved and imagined prison, the prison of his dreams, close to him. And he had a little boy playing on his grave. <laughs>